Welcome to Death Geek. We are doing our 30 days of Linux challenge. And so far, every computer in my house has been converted to Linux. The Linux solution on my laptop, I've got a Dell XPS 12 inch convertible. Boom, it's got Linux KDE. My main desktop has Ubuntu. I'm not booting into Windows. These are complete installs on in this case for my main computer the entire hard drive new hard drive i bought is completely filled with linux and also for the laptop is completely filled with linux so we're really getting into this challenge we're on week two and what i want to talk about today is software so we've done an introduction video we kind of talked about the reason why i wanted to do this challenge why linux is important the security etc you can click the link that will show up above the little eye icon and you can go to that video. We've done a video to show how you can install Windows inside of Linux and that is in case you're very scared to go to Linux, you're not sure, you may want to do a virtual box first, but I wanted to show you how you can still install Ubuntu and then later go into Windows if you just have a program you're completely relying on that you cannot uh, find a solution for in Linux. But today what we're going to be talking about is the software that I've installed so far and the solutions that are open source, completely free, that I'm utilizing so I don't need that Windows installation because almost every program has an alternative in Linux and a lot of times they are better. And in some cases, actually a lot of cases, you're probably already using the software, open source software within Windows to do various tasks. For instance, if you use OBS, that's what I'm using right now to install this or to record this video. So in any case, what we're gonna do, let's talk about some of the things you wanna do when you get set up. And then in our next video, we'll talk about customizations and tweaks. We'll also talk about some issues that I've run into in another video and how you can get around those. And hopefully this 30 days of Linux inspires you to go check out a complete Linux solution. So one of the first things I want to talk about is the various software that I've installed and all of this information you see here will be down in the description below. So you don't have to pause the video manually type it. You can just copy it and paste the installation instructions right there into your terminal and have everything set up. So as you know, everything in Linux you'll hear revolves around this terminal and this is scary to a lot of people but I promise you once you get used to the terminal once you start using it for a couple of hours you're gonna love the speed of it you're gonna love the accuracy the control it gives you over your system and you get to kind of feel like a hacker in one of those movies like swordfish or something you know you type it look at me I'm hacking the database no but it, it's it's pretty cool and it's very fast so in any case, one of the first things we want to do is get a firewall up and running. That's for protection. You don't really need a virus scanner. There's some options out there if you want one. Uh, Linux is a lot more secure, but if you're one of those who like to click on links, well, then you might want to install one or stop clicking on all the links. Actually, I almost got, got yesterday trying to install Google Chrome in one of the videos, and it was an ad for Google Chrome installation. And so I have no idea what that would have installed, probably some additional advertising or cookie programs or something. And that's what I get for trying to install Chrome anyways. Um, all right, so firewall solution. So GUFW, this is our firewall app. And again, the text will be low, just sudo apt-get install GUFW. I don't know why that's bouncing on my OBS screen. But in any case, that's the program there. And once you install that, you will need to enter your password uh, correctly. There we go. All right. And so you can turn this firewall on here or you can turn it off uh, for various reasons. Now, I will say when you have this firewall on, it will block some connections even on your local network. So if you're wanting to connect, say to a hard drive that's connected to your network, then you may want to go ahead and turn this off temporarily to get to that hard drive. It just depends on how your settings configured. But if you have a problem, that's probably what it is. So this is a nice firewall. Um, and here's where you can allow incoming or outgoing connections through your firewall uh, I think by 
uh, default these are on deny but I opened those up because we're, I was working on some other network stuff um, additionally install Ubuntu restricted extras so this is just going to what are you bothering me about this is Ubuntu 16.10 by the way um, which is kind of their beta version uh, where they're still working out issues for their what they call their LTS or long-term support. So if you don't want to deal with that type of stuff, then go to a 16.04 version and you're not going to have any issues or errors popping up. But I wanted to be on the latest installation of Ubuntu. So sometimes you get random messages of crashes and things, but it has never affected any actual program. It's just random things in the background starting or stopping or whatnot. All right, so sudo Ubuntu restricted extras so that's going to be you know flash and various grouping of programs that don't come standard with ubuntu um, gparted is a great tool it will allow you to see your partitions and how everything is set up so this is um, a good gui tool if you're wanting to see what's going on with your system or you need to change partitions etc uh, Gparted is very, very powerful. So you can see how my system is set up here. And you can make modifications to that as well, uh, depending on the, the drives that you have on mounting them, etc. cetera. Uh, Vivaldi, my favorite web browser. We have to have that. So uh, Vivaldi is here and installed and works perfectly fine. So you can see Vivaldi's up there. And next we have OBS, and that's what I'm using to record this video. If I drag it over, it'll do that, wah, 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 you know, video lapse thing that it does. Well, let me just show you. Real video within a video within a video within a video uh, inception. So uh, you could set up OBS here, and OBS will allow you to record your screen if you're a streamer, allow you to stream. Um, so that's a good program. Install VLC. VLC is a video encoder. It's a very powerful one, allows you to play tons of various formats of videos. Uh, so if you've downloaded or converted a bunch of DVDs or have a bunch of movie files, VLC is a go-to. And that's whether you're on Windows, Ubuntu, doesn't matter. VLC is so powerful. It's a fantastic tool. Um, so that could be your main video player. And that's what VLC looks like here. Privacy, allow me to data network access. Um, da, 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 da. that's for it to download media tracks etc so that's fine um so this is vlc it's just a media player but it's a very very powerful one uh kden live so this is what i'm using as a solution for kden live is what i'm using as a solution to do my video edit so once i finish this video i will go into kden live what i was using in windows was adobe premiere um, this will take some time for you to learn. It is different than Adobe Premiere. It is not um, as simplistic or easy to initially get started, but all the features are there. You can see in the videos, I've got you know the same uh, beginning, the same ending. I've got the text scrolling, the text pop-ups coming up. I'm editing, clipping, cutting. You can add transitions, fade. You see all the effects that are an option here for you on any of the videos. You've got your preview screen. It's really all there. Uh, some things I like about it, some things I don't. But for the most part, it's been a very powerful tool and it's free. Let me say that again. It's completely free. So the folks, uh, guys and girls who worked on this project, incredible job because I tried a bunch of different options people were suggesting out there open shots one and, it, and it's okay it's like a windows movie maker but kden live is incredible it's got all the features that i need to do my videos so highly highly recommend kden live looks like i put obs on here twice that was to make my list look bigger <laughs> uh Anyways, next you want to install Wine. Wine will allow you to install some Windows programs natively within Ubuntu. So it would look just like an Ubuntu program. Wine has a lot of limitations. I hear lots of people talking about Wine and how great it is. And it's neat. 
But man, there is a lot of stuff that does not work well on Wine. But think about it. It's trying to emulate a Windows environment without a Windows license and run some of the software. So what it's doing is impressive. But most of the stuff within it, you know, it's a pain to get anything working with it. So, if, But if you like to tweak and play around with things, Wine may be an option for you. Um, you can install you know, various things like iTunes, etc., through Wine, but older versions. Um, there's limited features sometimes within those programs that you're running, even if you do get them to work. So once you install Wine, though, it's a good option to have. Install Play on Linux because that will be your GUI, and it'll be much easier for you uh, to navigate. So all you do is you click here, Install Program, and you've got all of these options here, games, education, development, and you can even click install non-listed program and try to get something um, that's not listed here to function. But even some of the things within this list don't work. Um, so it, you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit. You can see the various browser options that you have, um, iTunes here, iTunes 10, iTunes 12, so if you're very dependent on that, um, but I've had mixed results with that as well. Multimedia tools, Office tools. Um, again, had a lot of problems with Office because I, I personally love Office. So I know some people are like, oh, man, Office sucks. Microsoft sucks, blah, 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 blah. I, I think Office is amazing. It's what I'm used to, and maybe that's why, but none of the other editors are anywhere as good. LibreOffice is great, and it comes pre-installed with Ubuntu, but there's a lot of, a lot to leave desired, especially when you get into the Excel uh, spreadsheet versions and all of the various options that you have within Excel for macros, etc., that are, are not as intuitive uh, in LibreOffice. So I wanted Office, but here's the good thing about Office. Office offers Office 365, their online portal. So if you have a license, you can just do it all online through the browser and it works extremely well. In fact, when I was on Windows, I used that more than the actual program installed on my system. So you can still use Office, and um, but it's going to be difficult to get it loaded onto your system. Or you could do, of course, the Windows 10 install within um, VirtualBox, and then you can run your Office through there if you wanted to. And so that's it. That's Play on Linux. And we're getting towards the end of our list. And Dashlane. So Dashlane is my password manager. And I installed that via Wine, and it works fine. So um, the only issue is it's not going to link with your browser. So you have kind of Dashlane over on the right, and then you have your browser, so it's not going to send the password information to it. So I've actually started migrating to LastPass because of that. And LastPass installs perfectly fine within Linux and Mozilla. And so I installed Dashlane, but um, we're trying FastPass out right now to see how good that is. And then, of course, Steam. And that's how I have Witcher 2 on here so you can play games. And Steam natively works within Linux. You can just do the sudo apt git install Steam. It works very, very well and you shouldn't have any problems at all connecting to your Steam account. So you can see all these games, mostly that go unplayed, but it automatically tells you, look at all these games that were in my library that I can play within Linux perfectly fine. So if you wanna get your game on, you've got it. So that's it, so far everything is going really well in 30 days of Linux, a couple issues that I'll talk about in another video and how I've gotten around them, but for the most part, I'm really enjoying the new desktop environment. We've got lots more content to come. Leave your comments below. Give me some suggestions. If you think I'm missing out on a specific software package or something I could use that's better, if you are giving this 30-day trial, if you're doing it along with me, let me know below. Keep the faith up. I appreciate everything you guys do in the community. We are at 500 subscribers. Remember when I was happy about 10, 20, 30, 40? This channel's grown so fast. We're at 500. Thank you so much for the love and support. Hope you like this video. I'll talk to you guys soon. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't get too far. Don't get the video.